the M235i. Upon its initial release, this car was heralded as the true successor to the E46 M3. But slapping on M badges and M parts does not make this car worthy of that title. But perhaps upgrading the suspension will, which is exactly why we're turning to the KW DDC kit. Let's get into it. What's up everybody, my name is Fritz and welcome to the channel. So our long wait is finally over and our coilovers from KW have finally arrived. And we have a bonus feature in here in the form of the Vorschlag camber plates. Not necessarily because we need any more camber on this car, because we have as much as we need for a daily driven car from the lower control arms and thrust arms. But because we're preparing for a retrofit that requires some of the features on the Vorschlag camber plates that are absent on any of the OE top hats. But no matter how many M retrofits or M stickers we throw at this car, it does not change the fact that it is not a true M car. And although upon its release, BMW didn't formally announce that it was going to come out with an M2, the E46 M3 successor is still a high bar to set for this car, especially when you consider that it has a lot of body roll. And although we did our best to remedy that in the form of the control arms as well as the sway bars, there's still a lot of body roll in the beginning and middle portion of the turns. So hopefully these coilovers will fill that missing gap and bring us one step closer to that high mark of the E46 M3 successor. But we have a lot of work to do before we can even think of really saying that. So let's get into it. With the car up and supported, we can remove our wheels and take off the end links. SPL uses a 15 millimeter nut and 18 millimeter counter hold while our pinch bolt uses a 16 millimeter nut and 18 millimeter bolt head. With it out, push the wiring bracket back and insert your spindle spreader tool. While you're back there, disconnect the headlight leveling sensor before disconnecting the sensors on the strut, which can be easily removed with a pick tool. To disengage the locking mechanism, before completely removing them from the strut. With your wheel assembly supported, remove the 13 millimeter bolts at the top as well as the E18 for the strut bar. Then remove your bottom support and take apart the strut from its housing. Once you remove the strut from its housing, make sure to support the wheel assembly as we assemble our new coilovers. In this case, we only need to transfer over the top portion of the dust boot and sensors from the old struts. KW states that we have a 7.5 to 8.5 inch of play on the 2 Series from the bottom of the spring perch to the pinch bolt, which can be hard to measure out of the car. So I went 8 inches from the bottom coilover notch to the spring perch, or 11 threads from the top. Once your settings are dialed in, tighten down the set screw and repeat on the opposite side. Then complete the assembly with the spring, dust boot, and proper camber plate. Like the front coilovers, these are side specific. We'll use the top nut from the Vorschlag camber plates and don't worry about torquing them down just yet. We'll do that towards the end. With everything assembled, let's transfer over our sensors and end links. SPL Parts recommends 34 newton meters for these. Don't forget your top gasket, and when seating your new strut, ensure the notch goes in the groove where your spindle spreader tool is. I required some WD-40 and a screwdriver to open up the gap a bit more, but once you get it in this far, you can put in your top bolts to ensure the strut goes on straight. Then once that notch is properly seated, you can use your jack to drive the strut into its housing. Once it's fully seated, remove the spindle spreader, bring in the wiring bracket, and tighten down the pinch bolt to 44 newton meters. Now we can bring down the jack, reconnect our headlight leveling sensor, as well as reroute and connect our sensors on the strut. Moving on to the passenger side. It's essentially the same thing, 
but no headlight leveling sensor to worry about. But I did try a few different things in order to give you multiple options during your install. First was using PB Blaster during the uninstallation, and this worked way better than WD-40. It allowed me to wiggle the strut out in the case where I wasn't able to shove the wheel assembly down and out. And on this side, be very careful that you don't strike the battery terminal with your sockets or your wrenches. In the 2 Series, we have much less working room than the 3s and the 4s, so we cannot simply tilt out the wheel assembly in order to pull out the strut. It has to come apart inside the wheel well. I should also note that the sway bar end links did not fit with the struts and my aftermarket sway bar, but I'll address this more towards the end of the video. When getting the strut back in, you'll notice that I needed to expand the housing a bit more again. But with the PB Blaster, it was much easier to get the strut in. Just go slow and wiggle it into place until you're sure the notch lines up. I forgot to mention that you may also need to rotate the camber plate in order to get it to seat properly. Once both struts are in, go ahead and tighten down the opposite end of both end links if you're able to get them in. If you have the SPL end links, it's 34 Newton meters. And don't forget to ensure that the height of each coilover and distance between the spring perch as well as the pinch bolts are even on both sides. Once they are, throw on your wheels and lower the car. Then we can tighten down the top bolts. The E18 gets 56 Newton meters and the 13 millimeters are set to 28 Newton meters. Although KW says under no circumstances should we impact the strut, Vorschlag says to impact the top nut because there's no way to get a counter hold or pass through here. While it's out of the car, this is true, but with the weight of the car on top of it, we're able to get in our 22 millimeter socket and get in a few more turns. When it finally starts to spin the strut into place, we actually revealed enough of that nine millimeter counter hold in order to get a pass through on it. Now we can tighten it down to the proper 40 Newton meters. Personally, I didn't adjust the camera plates. I just left them in their arrived location, which should be a close to neutral position. Just make sure to snug down the set screws when you have the plates in the position you want. Now we can put back on our covers and repeat on the opposite side. Moving on to the rears, which are much easier in my opinion, can be accessed after removing the wheels and splash guards. From the bottom, we have to get out the 21 millimeter bolt as well as the bottom 18 millimeter strut bolt. The 21 may require you to jack up the car assembly for removal. Then disconnect the EDC cable and three E12 bolts that hold the top of the strut. Now we can push down on the assembly to remove the spring, giving us space to angle out the strut. And once that's out, we can knock out the top spring support. We won't need it anymore. The 2 Series has 17 to 37 millimeters of play in between the ends of the perch and the adjuster. The rear spring is assembled with the supplied spring adapter at the bottom, followed by the helper spring, then the intermediate ring with the main spring on top of that and the adjuster at the very top. After popping off the dust shield and gasket, the top mount can be removed with a 16 millimeter and T25 pass through. I personally prefer the OEM nut over the double nut system KW provides, but feel free to use whatever you like. Then torque the top mount to the new strut with an 8mm pass through to 20 Newton meters. 
When placing in the spring adapter, you'll notice it has grooves that will lock into the spring carrier. Just twist it until it locks into place. Then insert your spring in the correct order. And the top of the adjuster will go in where the old spring support was. Double check your measurements before prepping the top of your new strut and be mindful of the adjustment hole and ensure the EDC connection is properly orientated. Once the strut is properly positioned, secure the top E12s to 28 Newton meters and reconnect your EDC. Then jack up the assembly to insert your 18 and 21 millimeter bolts. Get them snug, but don't torque yet. Then place on your wheel and move on to our last side. Looking back at it, if you're able to, it's much faster to drill out the bottom bolts rather than undoing the nut and pushing them out. I should also mention my height adjustments are pretty conservative, so if you want a lower ride height, you'll want to adjust your measurements accordingly. Also keep in mind that these coilovers were designed to blend the best of comfort and performance on the street. So although they might not give you the most slammed look, it's probably more than enough for a daily driven car. With the fronts coming down anywhere from 0.4 to 1.4 inches, and the rears coming down 0.2 to 1.4 inches. But if you want anything more than that, you might want to look into a different coilover set. Another installation tip would be putting in the spring adapter first, followed by the strut, then the rest of the spring components. This will give you the most amount of working space possible when putting in each component. As you jack up the car to get in the two bottom bolts, you can use a pry bar paired with a screwdriver or junk bolt to align the holes before placing in the appropriate bolts. And don't forget to confirm your measurements on both sides. With the last set of coilovers in, we're almost done. Just put back on your wheels and measure the length from the center cap to the fender. They should be even on both sides. If so, remove the wheels and bring the axle up to your measured height, in our case, 13 and a quarter inches. Then tighten your strut bolt to 100 newton meters and the outer bolt to 165 newton meters. Lower down the axle and reinstall your splash guard. Do the same on the other side. If you have rubber bushings in the front and loosen any of those control arms, you have to do the same thing there as well. Lastly, torque your wheels to 140 newton meters and enjoy the fresh suspension upgrade from the KW DDC kit in your BMW. Just like that, we've installed the KW DDC kit on your BMW. And even if your car doesn't have factory EDC installed, if that's something that you want, KW makes this exact same coilover set in an adaptable fashion that could be fitted onto any BMW. But to take note of some important things with our exact setup here is that our mounting point for the front sway bar end links have changed. And even with our adjustable end links fully retracted, it doesn't fit. Mine in particular actually bent. So I had to call SPL parts and custom order a set of end links. 
and I'm currently working with them in order to have something up on the site. That way, if this is the coilover system that you want, you have the proper end links to pair with them. Second is the Vorschlag camber plates. They were custom assembled in order to fit this car, but also to adapt the retrofit that we have on the way, which is another suspension modification that's gonna go in the inside of the engine bay of this car. So if that's not something that you're concerned with, then go ahead and get the standard camber plates that are associated with your car. But I can honestly say that after driving around in this for a couple of days, this car handles like a champ now. The bumps and imperfections on the roadway, it's pretty much a one up, one down. It feels so much more comfortable. And the body roll, which was my main concern, in the beginning and middle portions of the turn have virtually gone away. So this thing I'm confident can handle any turn on the roadway. However, it's a bit low for me because this isn't my daily driven car. So I'm gonna let it settle for a little bit, adjust the ride height, and then do an alignment. From there, we'll do a future review video based off of those parameters. I do realize that installation of coilovers is a bit more involved than your regular DIY. And all of this video was a bit longer to include more details. Feel free to leave any questions that you have down in the comment section below, because I would love to help you guys get your own coilovers installed on your BMW. It doesn't matter if you go with this brand or not, or if you decide to go with a different variant from the KW lineup. If you need any of the resources at all, it's gonna be down in the description links, and I'm gonna be updating that as we have more information from places like SPL and Vorschlag. And make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the future review video of the KW DDC kit. And I'll see all of you guys in the next one.